All right, so rather than you know spend days and days trying to find the perfect template, it might actually be less headache and stress to find a really good template and then just modify those last few things for what you need. So that's kind of what we're going to be focusing on today. We're going to be looking at, ah, let's see, let me share my screen as a slideshow. One moment. There we go. All right. There's a template override is kind of, a, it's a technical term and a general term. We're going to be using the general definition of template override tonight. Anything that changes, that's a change to your default template. So um, from that view, there's three common types of overrides. There's custom CSS uh, that, you, that you can add in that will override the, the template CSS. There is language override, so something that, that Joomla generates you want to change the way, the way that phrase is. is. Um, there's also, you can also do this sometimes with language files that come with components. It kind of is a component by component thing. Um, and then there is uh, just creating an alternate layout. So if you've ever seen templates that have like a uh, a module position with that is um, that it says use this style for it or use this this uh, layout. That that's what they've done is they've created an override for the normal and giving you an extra choice. Um, so we're going to go over those. We're going to focus mostly on the number one and number two, but we we will spend a little bit of time just looking at number three. All right, let's dive into adding your own CSS. Okay, you probably know this about CSS, but just in case you don't, whatever's loaded last is what gets, what gets rendered on the page. So you can have 48 different colors for your paragraph tag, but it's the last color loaded that the paragraph is gonna, text is gonna show. So keep that in mind. If you put in something and an override and it's not showing, it, you, one of the troubleshooting things you can look at is what loaded last. But in Joomla, uh, if you follow the, the path that Joomla uh, intends for you to follow, and, and if the template developer for your template has followed Joomla's recommendations, um, there is a uh, one, there is a single place you should be able to put your custom CSS to where it will guaranteed be loaded last and will show up on your page, unless of course you put CSS directly in in your um, article or right there in line. But um, let's see who that place is. That place is going to be in one of two spots. For some templates in your settings, and um, let me see if I can escape out of this real quick. We're going to go pop over to um, the template list here. Um, we are using, uh, here's a list of templates, and if I clicked on any one of the names of the templates, I would go to that uh, templates section, I mean settings, and some templates will give you a lot of things you can do, and some templates will give you just a few. Uh, it just depends on what the developer wanted, wanted to um, offer you there. Um, so I, one way that developers can offer you uh, a place to put custom CSS is if they uh, have a field in the settings page and it's going to store it in the database. Um, if you're familiar with WordPress, WordPress developers do this a lot. This is a very uh, uh, common way to do it in WordPress. Now in Joomla, however, the most common way is to actually have a custom CSS file. Um, I personally uh, like this as a developer because I like seeing all of my custom CSS in one spot. I like to be able to scroll through it. Um, and, and I like to be able to put in uh, comments and what I, what I wanted to use it for. Um, and it just kind of helps me remember because, you know, um, give, give me two, two nights of good sleep and I will not remember what, what that particular CSS code was for that I put in. So, so I like that to having it all in a file in, in, in one place to reference. Um, let's, uh, let's see, what is my next? There we go. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to um, I'm using Firefox. We're going to use the Firefox built-in inspector tool, and we're going to look around at some CSS on our, on our Joomla user group website that we have here in Dallas. And um, we're going to um, make some changes to our new template that we have loaded. 
And it is now demo time. All right. Alt. Alt. Ooh, okay. Alt tab. One moment. Alt tab. Oh, nice. Whoops. So just alt tab, alt tab, and I want to do this one. Okay. Oh, that's that's slick. I like that. that. Way right back. All right. Cool. Okay. So let's go to the front end of our website, and we'll pull up a new tab. Oops. Let's spell it correctly. JumaDallas.org. Okay. We are using a gantry free theme. And uh, what I like about this theme is that uh, it's got a good, strong um, contrast for the text against the white background. It's um, uh, that the print is a little bit larger than normal. It's, it's easy to read. Uh, but it, it's kind of, um, it's a little bit plain. It doesn't tell me that, that this other, until you get down to the bottom, you don't see a lot of color. There's there's the Joomla logo. I think I would for for today we're going to try to add some Joomla color to our site. Just some little color accents. So if you notice on the Joomla logo, we, there is a Joomla green and a Joomla orange and a red and a blue. Well, we're going to um, utilize some of those colors. I have. Let's see. Alt tab. There it is, right here. I have pulled some of those colors um, from in my in Photoshop, and there are the hex codes for the Joomla red, blue, green, and orange. I also pulled some lighter uh, versions of those colors. So we're going to kind of use these colors to maybe change a few things on our template. First, we're going to uh, try test them out. So I'm going to grab this um, Joomla green. We'll use that as our test color to kind of figure out where things are. Now, I've already uh, got some code ready to go, so we won't go through everything I'm going to add. But I want to walk through, for those of you who don't do this very often, um, how we find how to change something. We're going to experiment first in the Inspect tool, and then we're going to go add it into CSS. So the first thing I think I'd like to change is we've got this light gray border, I guess, under the title here, and we also have it under the title of this section here in the sidebar. So let's find out what that is and how it got there. When you use the Inspect tool, let's pull this up a little bit. Um, if you've used this before, you know it's going to make a good guess on, on what you're trying to see, where it's going to take you where it thinks you're wanting to go. You can see the HTML over here, you see that some of this is collapsed. If you want to see more detail, you can click on the arrows to open up that HTML code. Um, but I will, I'm particularly interested in when I hover over the header 2 tag, it highlights that text, but it also, look, it's also kind of highlighting that border on the bottom. So I'm going to bet that this is, that border is somehow associated with that. Right there, let's look over here real quick on the side and see what kind of CSS is being applied to that section. So we see our H2 code there. I'm not seeing a, uh, anything in the border. It was higher. Oh, there it is. It's the first one. There we go. Okay, border bottom color. It is actually, it, there's the H2, but let's go back up the hierarchy. It's also... Coming, it's the H2 that's specifically in the component dash content class, which is in the R dash main body dash surround ID, div ID. Okay? What happens when we unclick it? Then it, it uh, oops, let's lower our page a little bit so we can see what happens when we click it. It goes away when we unclick it. That's, so we do have the right thing. Oops. <laughs> And then we want to click it, turn it back on. There we go. If we want to change the color to our green text that we have, we will, whoops, sorry about that, paste in our text. All right. And then we're going to change, uh, now that's interesting. 
Um, it applies to more than just the component area. It's, it's applying to the sidebar as well. So that's uh, something that we'll take note of. Um, but for now, I, I think that's, uh, it's, you know, using green on a page is a little bit um, risky because different monitors will show green different ways. So I like, I like green a lot. It's one of my favorite colors, but I do try to use it um, as accent and not necessarily uh, as a main feature. So why don't we go ahead and use it for this border color, and we're going to go put it, find our custom CSS file. So let's go back over to templates. All right. So here is the, we can see from here, default for all pages, the one with the star is the template that we're using. I, I already know that there's no place in settings to put in custom CSS. So I put in a page in the template file structure. I'll show you where it is. And we can go straight there by clicking this link over here under the template column. Okay, this is the file structure for the template that we are using. We, you can see the name of the template up here, the R2 Afterburner 2, R, RT for Rocket Theme Afterburner 2. Um, and where the, where um, our Rocket Theme, this theme is built on the Gantry framework, and for Gantry framework where you put your custom CSS is in the CSS folder. Um, don't let this custom folder fool you. That's not where it goes. It goes in, for this theme, it goes in the CSS folder. And they have a very particular naming convention they want. It needs to be, all, in all lower case, the name that you see up here for the theme needs to be the first part of the name for the custom CSS if you're using a, a, rocket, a, a gantry theme and dash, and then the word custom.css. Now, a lot of your templates will just have you put in custom.css, but, but this is the naming convention you must use for this theme. Um, and then the nice thing about the way this is set up is that when, whenever you do an update for this theme, um, if you, whether you're updating the Gantry framework or you're updating the theme itself, it will not overwrite this custom CSS file. Um, it will, everything else that came with the theme will be potentially overwritten with an update, but not this one. So anything you put in here is safe from being overwritten from updates. So let's uh, click on this and see what we have there. Okay, we have a few things already in there, but um, from uh, updates that we have, well, from, from things we've done as a group. Um, but uh, we want to put in now code that we just found. Um, over here in our inspector tool. So we know that it's going to be, um, we could grab all of it, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to grab that right there. We're going to do copy. And I do believe we could even go down far, yep, we can, and just grab all of this like that. Okay, let's copy that and paste it into our custom CSS. Oops, wrong tab, this one, and see what happens. But first, we also do want to put in a comment about what this is. Um, changes the border bottom color under <coughs> okay and now let's put it in whoops there we go uh oh sorry I'm having a difficult time typing properly that should be a star there we go. Let's clean up the white space here. All right, so let's uh, save it and see if that does what, we, what we're expecting.
All right, when we refresh, if it works, we'll see the green there. There we go. And it's um, it's in one spot. So I have that's okay. We have it covered. Um, we're going to find it in the other spot over here. Um, how is my time? Okay, okay, yeah. So let's look at uh, why it didn't show up in both places. Well, I, well, let's go look at that real quick. It didn't show up in both places because we have some qualifiers here about where it's just not any old H2 title that we're going to put this green border under. It's going to be one, the H2 title that shows up with this, associated with this class and in the div named with this ID. So we've, we've qualified it to a specific application. And that's actually pretty handy. Um, and you'll be doing that a lot as you do a lot of customizing of your CSS on your template because, in fact, I would recommend that you do that because sometimes just changing the H, this for the H2 or for the title class, is uh, would have unintended consequences when you um, maybe load up a new a new component or or create a new menu uh, page or or you know if you're not checking every single page on your site if you have a lot of pages um, you want to make sure that's only going to change where you want it changed and not just willy nilly everywhere. So um, let's go back to our page here and find out how do we change this gray one in the sidebar. Okay, inspect element. There we go. Okay, right away we see at the top the border bottom color. And we're going to click it on and off to make sure we're looking at the right one. There we go. That's it. So we see on this one that... Um, I'm not seeing here RT main body surround component. It's still pulling that. I think we need to find maybe go over here to the left and maybe go up the hierarchy a little bit and find what else can we. Um, we want to use that code, but we want to qualify it for just the sidebar. So if we go here. And there's main body, content bottom, grid four. Here we are. This is, we're getting closer. Okay, that highlights all the here's side A. You know, it looks like they're highlighting the same thing, but um, the sidebar A, I recognize sidebar A as one of my module position options. So I think I'm going to go with that because that way I know that everything I assign to sidebar A is going to get this, this um, and, and maybe not other things. So uh, we will click on that. The side, that is an ID. So I'm thinking what we can do is simply go to here. We're going to copy this. Changes the board and bottom color under H2 title on sidebar A. And instead of the RT dash main body surround, we are going to use RT dash sidebar dash A. And it is also an ID, so it's going to have a number sign in the front. Okay, let's save this and see what happens. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and clear cache. Just to be on the safe side that we are really seeing what we just did. <coughs> oh, 
Okay, so that did not work. And I, um, and I knew it wasn't going to work because I actually know what the correct answer is. I struggled with this earlier in the weekend. <laughs> Sometimes you really have to dig in and into these the zillion different um, – let's look at that element again. Expect <coughs> element. Um, sometimes it's a, it's a trial and error thing. You have to clear your cache. You have to reload it. You have to, because uh, you can change it here, and you can have these same. Um, you you can think you're calling to the right specifications uh, for your CSS. You know, applying it to the right uh, classes and IDs, and it's still not working the way you expect it to work. So sometimes you have to do some digging. And I will tell you on this one. Let me tab over. To uh, the here it is this one. Um, here we go. We uh, what I ended up doing. In fact, let me just go ahead and uh, rather than having to let's do that, I'm just going to copy all of that. And we're going to copy my notes down here, clean it up in a minute. Okay. So for the sidebar, what I ended up having to do was um, it was it was actually works work for the title. It's actually tied to title, the actual CSS code more than just the CS, uh, the H2, so. Um, and I actually, for this, um, let me save this and we'll go look at it. I uh, made it orange, pulled in the Joomla orange for that one. There we go. Um, so sometimes you do have to kind of dig through there until you get the, the uh, result that you're expecting. Or that you want. So let's go look. Yeah, let, let's go look at both of those. Thank you. Um, so here's the code that we've got active so far. And actually, I'm a little surprised. Well, I guess, I guess not. No, I'm not surprised ever. Okay. Uh, here's what's active. Here's what's showing the green on the content because it is right. Uh, it is applying to just the, this ID and this class in the ID when you use H, the, the header 2. And uh, the reason you're seeing orange in the sidebar is because um, – yes, yes, yes. Okay, let me, let me just go ahead and delete this one. Well, no, I'm going to see it side by side. So. Oh, okay. So like, All right. So like nine, like uh, line twenty is equal to line thirty-two. So the difference uh, was you have to do instead of an H two with dot five. Right. Yes. Okay. I see what you're saying. I see what you're asking. Yeah. That, th thanks. That's a good point. Um, you're right. This this one, the top one, they didn't work, and it won't work now either because it's, we don't call it first. I mean, we don't call it last. But um, this did not work because it wasn't it uh, this for the sidebar. This uh, thing that we're trying to override, the bottom border color, was tied to title and not as uh, – it was it's, It was also tied to H2 because it's, uh, if you go look up the CSS in the – where, where it sits in the, in the template CSS file, it's actually tied to both. But um, because of how it loads, because how CSS loads, and it's actually in the title, ta the, the title uh, CSS in the – um, where, where the original code sits. So we want to override it. We needed to call to dot .title instead. So uh, that's why that one works. So let's go ahead and take the one that didn't work out or at least comment it out. Okay. All right, so let me uh, check how I'm doing on time real quick. Okay, it's 7.40. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uncomment some of these other ones. Um, by using 
this that same methodology I went through and figured out um, other things I want to change for instance um, like the layout but a little hard time seeing this and, the, and it's a little hard seeing you can see this text when you have rubber but when you don't have rubber the, the dark red on gray is, is a little hard to read um, so I wanted to um, darken that background so that everything was a little more readable and on this bottom I wanted to change that to one of the Joomla colors we're going to change it to green um, let's go do that here's the CSS that changes the color of the title oops nope sorry I just see where I am there we go so that div that holds those modules in the bottom row is called rt-bottom we will uh, uncomment this Let's see what that looks like in a moment and then the footer Gave it a green background. Uncomment that. And I also had an additional uh, little change to the sidebar. We'll go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, let's save the file and see what we have on the front side. I can clear my cache. Okay, so we see we now have a blue in the sidebar as to kind of differentiate that. We have um, down here at the bottom, we have now a black background and a green background. Um, additional things that I can do would be to maybe look at I could change right now this this red is coming from our template settings let's go look at that I um, mean if I want to do more Joomla colors I could uh, change link uh, I could make the link color the Joomla red and I could make the accent color the Joomla blue um, is one thing I can do another thing I can do is I can change link colors uh, both uh, the link you the color you see plus highlight any anything you see going on in here that you can tell is coming from the default theme styles um, we can change and apply it to just this um, this row so um, and that that's true for any at uh, the sidebar as well if we wanted to have a dark blue background with white uh, default text on the sidebar we could set that up in our custom CSS this overrides so that kind of gives you um, a little bit of a taste of that how you can change the look of something through the through the overrides okay um, and let me flip back to our slides now this one okay and we did that okay so the second way that you can do overrides is um, language and I think this is one we don't think about very much because we're just kind of used to pre, you know to using the language that comes out of the box but you know everything about there's so much about Joomla that's customizable and so if you can edit the language maybe you should kind of make it your own we are here in Dallas the Dallas Joomla user group we're here in Texas maybe we can throw some Texas stuff up on our Joomla site so um, you can do that by editing lang by putting use utilizing the overrides in language the the extensions languages overrides I have up there at the top the path that you get there on the back end okay so I have to say it's so it's so easy once you've done it it's super easy to do so let's let's go give it a shot all right here we go 
We're going to close this. And we are going to go to Extensions, Languages, and Overrides. Okay. If you go to the front end and we go down to the bottom, we see there is a member area link. We're going to click on that. All right, down here, we have, um, I, you see, I, I've already put in one override. It used to say forgot your password, and now I put in aw shucks, because I don't know, I think that's a, is that a Texas saying? I don't know, Connie, have you heard it? Oh, well. <laughs> So, so anyway, that, that's we've done that. We're now going to change forgot your username. And you might have gotten a sneak peek at this. I, I pulled, I, I went, it, this, is a fun, this is a fun activity. If you're looking to kill time on your computers, if we all need ideas for that, you should do a search for Texas sayings. There's just a wealth. And they're all funny. Um, you, we, the... the you know, the sky's the limit on, on what you can use Texas Saints for. But we are going to go over language overrides. We're going to select the language, uh, the site, and you can see where I already have that one in. Now we're going to go add another one for the forgot your username. I'm going to click new. Okay, so when this opens up, you're going to see right here we have a search file. Lest you think you need to know where all this stuff is, you don't. All you need to know is what you want to change. And what we're wanting to change is forgot your username. So that's what we put in here. Forgot your username. Search. Search results. It shows up in two places. I happen to know that this view from the menu link is a component view. So what we're going to be changing here is a component thing. So click on that. When I, all I do is click on it and it already po it populates all this other stuff for me. It populates what I'm actually, the, the XML label that I'm actually changing and it gives you what it currently has. We, oh, let's see, alt. Tab. There's my, whoops, whoops. It's this. I pulled this great uh, Texas saying from, no. Maybe I don't have the right. Nope, this is not the right one. One moment, please. Oh, it's this one. Okay. There it is. I'm sharp as mashed potatoes today. I love that. What's my username? Let's go put that in. Okay, so there's my new text, and all I have to do now is save. And we're going to go check it. There we go. Now we have our customized Texas lingo, uh, what's my username link? So here's the, the um, ideas galore. There you go. I would love to see what you guys come up with, suggestions you have for uh, changing default language tags in Joomla for something that's more Texanized. We could really, you know, make this a really Texas site. So just uh, let those creative juices um, simmer, and we'll see what we can come up with. So anyway, that, that was super easy, wasn't it? I mean, you just find, you, you do your search here. Uh, you, find, you find what you want. You click on it. It populates the language constant, and then you just change, change it to what you want, and you're done. So when you close this, then you can see a list of um, what, you, what you have already uh, set up. And it gives you the new text in this view.
Um, notice though, when you first go to overrides, should you think, if you put in an override and you go to overrides and you see nothing there, don't panic. It's there. Just remember, you've got to choose. Basically, you're, you're pulling up an XML. It, it's looking through a particular XML file. Um, and this, let me take this as a moment to highlight if you have, um, if you have multilingual um, or bilingual uh, users on your site, um, especially if you're managing, if they're managing the back end, it is super easy to put in um, a new language files for them. You know, if, if they'd be more comfortable working in another language, you can load up a new language file for them. And um, everything in the back end, the labels will change for their language. Um, and, um, and then you can also do particular overrides for those as well. So for instance, let's, let's see what it would look like if we went to Arminian and to create an override for forgot your password. What does it pull up? Um, I may actually need to know the name of it. Hang on a second. Let's go to the English site. We're going to copy this. Copy. And then we're going to go to this one. And then this time when we set up new, we're going to do a search on a constant. And there it is. And there it is. So if we, wanted to, if we knew the language and we wanted to change it, we could change it here. For now, we will cancel. All right, so let's go back to our slides here and minimize that. All right, we did that. All right, so that uh, concludes the we're actual working on um, and doing it on the demos live on the website. And I cannot tell you how relieved I am that I did not crash the live Joomla user group site. And even though I have, do as I say, not as I do, even though I have done a demo on a live site, um, doesn't mean that you should. So there's, there's the disclaimer. <laughs> okay. Does anyone have any questions so far? Uh, shoot your question in the chat stream and um, Jeff will read it out loud. Well, I had an experience in working in the language of Bernard. Hmm? I didn't even know this what you were just in the lab. I went inside the code itself and changed the code in order to get that done. It was a couple of years ago, I think about a year and a half ago in the summer, I was working in the project, so I had to change certain things. I had no idea how to do that. So I went in the code, then changed the whole thing. I'm so relieved, like, this ain't going to exist. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. It's, uh, and, and now, and, and by doing it this way, as, with the languages, just like it, it works, just like it is with the custom CSS, once you've put it in there, it doesn't matter if the language pack upgrades. That's true. Your override stays. That's very true. So, um, uh, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah. Uh, please don't shoot me. I didn't see the black price when I copied the. Please don't shoot me. I didn't see the black price when I copied the. Have to burn custom CSS. And your computer's running low on battery. <laughs> it's running low on battery. Yes, yes, uh, yes, it is. Yeah, if you could, that would be great. Um, I uh, the. Any, uh, anything I have put up here code-wise is going to end up on the Joomla user group uh, follow-up article for tonight's presentation. So if you copied something that you saw, it was probably okay. And if it wasn't, you know, it's probably okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't guarantee that it'll work. Um, you might want to test it. Um, okay, let's uh, move on. If there's no more questions up to this point, 
then let's move on to template override of files. So we are going to go look at this. I, I, will, I have to confess, the demo I was working on to show this particular feature was a fail. I found where to do it, but then, you know, the, um, yeah, it was just, I couldn't quite get done what I wanted to get done without having to edit PHP or paste in some JavaScript, and that was kind of outside the scope of what we wanted to do. We wanted to see some overrides we could do quickly that didn't involve, or relatively quickly, that didn't involve uh, having to write PHP or JavaScript or anything like that. So, uh, but, but uh, if you are someone who is comfortable um, working with either one of those languages um, or you want to create your own uh, layout page for whatever reason, um, I will show you where you would go to get started on doing that. Okay. Um, okay, so first of all, the overrides are kept for this kind of uh, for file overrides, and we're talking the, the file that dictates what, say, for instance, the contact form looks like when you're using the contact feature built into Joomla. Um, if you want to, to edit that in your template and do some different things with it, maybe like pull in some other things on that page, like um, your, you know, if you have, say, for instance, you are a user on the site, and you're logged in, and you're wanting to use the contact form to, to send a message to the webmaster, if that's what the contact form is for, and you want the contact form to be able to show who you are and what's your re reply email address, or whatever you might want to do that's your custom scenario. Um, and you want to, to make that a, a, a file override, you're going to have, there's a, there are files that Joomla uses to create that default contact form if you choose that menu item option. And so you just simply make copies of that and create either an alternative to be, that you can use or a complete override, a replacement. So every time Joomla wants to do that, it's going to use your form instead of the default one. So um, let's see where those are set up real quick. Oh, shoot. There we go. Whoops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Thank you. All right, so we, the first place you're going to go to is, um, oh, I have it up here, back to the templates. So close file. Okay, I am sitting here in our the one we actually use. I'm just going to go show this to you in one we don't use. So let's go back to here. Okay, um, Grunge. That's a uh, a template we have loaded, but we're not currently using. Um, so I'm going to go look at that one. And by the way, I would recommend if you are just starting out doing this type of template override, I do one of two things. I either play around with a similar template like we're about to do, or you can take your, the template that you are using, this is our active one, and make a duplicate. You would just check it here, and you would click duplicate here. It would make you a duplicate. Um, and you can play around with your duplicate, maybe assign it to a hidden, you know, a one single menu item or something. You, you, there's ways you can play around with it um, without uh, having to actually be adding files uh, to oh. your uh, active template. And, there, and there's a reason for that. I'll show you why that would be important to you. So a lot of templates already use overrides, I've discovered, like the, the rocket theme templates, these free ones. Uh, they come to you with overrides. And you, I know this because when you click in the HTML section, 
That's where the Joomla keeps the overrides. So Joomla is going to go, when it loads up your template and it's going to load up different things that, that your page is doing, it's going to check this folder first, the HTML folder first, to see if there's something there that it needs to do. As the, the, it, see if the override's there, essentially. If the override there, it's going to use that. If, if it's not, then it's going to go to the normal place it would look. This particular template has a lot of overrides out of the box. Um, earlier uh, in the week, well, this weekend I added this one and um, for the contact. So all the rest of them are already there. Um, and I'll click on that and we'll see what uh, I added uh, my override options here are. If I wanted to um, create a replacement file for one that was currently being used, I would keep it as the same name. If I wanted to create an alternative, I would rename these. Uh, and you'll see here we have uh, the replacement file here and we have an alternative file here. Um, and so this is in contact, and I'll show you where, where that kind of, one, one of the places that that would apply. Um, let me go over here and go back to, um, I think it's contact. So if I go into our contact, and I go to form, whoops, display, I think. Way down here at the bottom, you see this little layout feature, this little layout option? If I click on this, I've got some choices. There's the default, there's uh, one from another template, and here's the one from the template we were just looking at, um, Grunge. This would be, uh, if I wanted to use if I had set up, which I, I did not, but if I had set up a, a really different, uh, well, basically my customized layout for, for the contact, I would choose this one. And I think I would also have to have wherever this particular contact is going to show up, I would have to have that assigned to that template, but I'm not completely clear on that one. That, that might be something somebody else can answer. But anyway, that's, that's kind of what this, in order for your custom code to show up as a option here, on a, as a layout option, it's actually got to be uh, an override that shows up back here in this HTML section. So, uh, there we go. Um, so use cases, and we've talked about some of these already, but you know, if you have custom JavaScript or PHP and you want to use it in more than one place, it might be worthwhile making an override, a, a layout override. If you have um, a different layout for a particular category, for instance, you are running a blog, and there is one particular category you want the, article, the blog articles to be laid out differently. You want a featured image showing up a certain way. Um, and you want certain custom fields for that particular category showing up a certain way, um, then you know you might want to go, go to the effort of making a completely different layout for that particular category. Uh, that would be a great use of this. Um, and again, we just saw where you can have different options for a module or a component. Um, if you want to create a new menu type, you know when you load up a new component and it comes with these menu layout options? So you can create a menu type uh, to show, like, um, if we were to load RS Form Pro, um, one of their menu items is to be able to see form submissions. And it, it has it, you know, pretty much pre-formatted. You get to check a few settings, but it, it's figured out that layout for you. Well, what if you wanted a uh, menu type for RS Form Pro that RS Form Pro doesn't give you? Well, you can go create your own and have it as, an, as a new menu item option. So that, that would be another use of, of your layout overrides. So there's a whole lot you can do with overrides that we just did not even address tonight. Uh, if you want to see the different ideas, walkthroughs, things that other people have done, 
Joomla Shack has a blog post that, and I have a link for it right there, that is a long list of all kinds of tutorials and blog posts and walkthroughs. So check that one out. If you subscribe to OS Training or you are considering subscribing to them, because this is behind a paywall, um, they have a course on creating template overrides. And, uh, and it's, um, it's, a, it's a pretty good little course. Um, uh, they've got a good uh, scenario with contacts. In fact, they create in the course you will, it has you creating a new category for contacts. You're going to be making a My Team page. And it's going to have this very particular layout with photos and, and pulling just some of the information from the contact profile, not all of it, and laying it out in a particular way. So it's a, it's a good exercise in how to do that. And that is it for the overrides, template overrides presentation.